Now, uh, all of this that we've been talking about, sir, it, it goes around the wider topic of peer review. Now, some people will at least be a little bit aware of what we call the Grievance Studies Affair, where three hoaxes set out to prove that there were major failings in peer review, particularly in the areas that you're interested in, which is gender, feminism, race politics, queer politics and cultural studies. I'm sure I've missed out some of them, but that's the, the headline issues. Now, these were people who took uh, a little team, they got a little team together and they wrote these fake papers comprised of the most ridiculous nonsense conceivable. And they wagered that if they were able to get any of these to make it to publication, it would serve as proof that academic standards were slipping. Now, when their hoax was uncovered, uh, four of their 20 papers had been published, three had been accepted, six were rejected and seven were undergoing review. Now, the most famous of these published papers was the human reactions to rape culture and queer performativity at the dog park. Gee, that's, it's, it's even hard to read, let alone go through. Now, that was highly praised as being well-written and informative. James, what do you make of this saga and its implications for peer review? Yeah, well, there are many problematic journals out there. So I, I don't think the general public understands how many of these academic journals are out there by these big major publishers. But they publish just utter rut, uh, rubbish in some of them. Like uh, it, it, there's a journal called Fat Studies, which is about some sort of in, intersectional uh, feminist approach to studying how good being fat is. And so there is all sorts of problematic um, literature out there. And I'll say actually, so James Lindsay, who you know was one of the people leading that, that effort, um, it is his work that in some ways inspired my woke paper because when trying to figure out which terms to look for, to search for, James, on his website, um, I think it's maybe called New Discourses, something like that, he has a woke dictionary where he indexes various woke terms and has their definitions. And so I actually cite James's woke dictionary as where I retrieve many of my words. So they have had a very, I think, um, it's, it's sad that they had to do what, what they did, but they have done something that needed to be done. And I guess people like me are sort of following up on, on their work in a certain way and just exposing it more and more. For those who are interested, I, I uh, on, on, on X, I regularly publish or, or post some very bad papers. I even have in my Substack newsletter a weekly roundup I send out every Sunday morning. At the very end of the weekly roundup, it's the rubbish bin. And that's where you can find some of these studies hiding. Um, the rubbish bin is where I put these very, very bad papers. Well, it sounds almost like, despite the fact that these guys deliberately wrote and submitted actual crap, that they were doing probably more serious academic research than the other people that they were trolling. Would you say that's fair? This is actually important research to be done on the topic of peer review? Uh, well, it is. And actually, I've heard James um, talk at one point. And it, when you start to read these papers that are of this particular style, you will see that they have a particular template to them. They all sound exactly the same, and that's how they knew that they could probably get away with it. And James has talked about that, how he was able to pick that up based off of his training, I think, in a certain niche area of mathematics that kind of looks for patterns or something. And, I mean, I'm not trained in that area, but it's very easy for me to see that same pattern. So, to be honest, I think many years from now, we could look back at this sort of experiment as learning more about human cognition and bias because it's just very strange what's happening. These academics just they they follow the same exact rhythm and format with their with their papers. It's crazy. Well, it's actually reminding me as you say this, I've just started playing around with ChatGPT just for, you know, shits and giggles. And if you ask it to write uh, a, a speech or an essay and you just change the name of who you want it to write it in, it replicates itself over and over and over again with the same paragraph structure, the same points. It just changes very yeah. slightly the edges. You could probably actually do a whole experiment getting ChatGPT to write articles for peer review. And I bet you some of them would get in if you asked it to write it on gender studies or fat studies. It'd probably be <laughs> accepted. Um, but the wider and far more controversial point is that the failings that exist in these 
obvious subjects can also be replicated perhaps in quieter ways in the hard science. And I know that it's certainly possible to get inaccurate and bluntly wrong studies through peer review in things like biology and climate science. And that's where people are really starting to wonder how good the system is. But my final question on peer review is this. Given you've submitted so much work to the system and contributed to keeping the system honest, what do you think is the best solution to this obvious problem that has taken hold? Do academics need to improve themselves? Would that even be possible? Or do we need a different system? What, are your, what would you do if it was your job to fix this problem? Whew, that is a, a very loaded question because there's so many layers of complexity here. Uh, I can just start to rattle off a few things. So one of, one of the issues is that um, a lot of people don't realize this, and it's so stupid, is that peer reviewers work for free. So we are reviewing for journals that fall within for-profit publishers. We are basically getting used as free labor, and it's crazy. And most academics don't realize that because when they review papers, they're on like usually a full salary at a university. But it is crazy that, um, so I know this because I, I work outside of the university sometimes doing research. And so when I get sent an email to review a paper, I'm like, wait a minute, why am I going to work all day for free for this publisher to review this paper right now? And again, be careful with it and take time. It might take two days to review that. So that is a huge problem. People are waking up to that. And, and some people that are good peer reviewers are tapping out of the system because they know they're not being compensated for their work. So that's, that's a major issue right now. Um, gosh, what else? I, I don't know, but it, it does also come down to the individuals themselves, like you've mentioned, just being um, like good and rigorous scientists. Um, I think you'd be pretty shocked, maybe you wouldn't. Um, in addition to some of the reviews I've gotten back, even people within the area that I'm studying, so this is ir like irrelevant to sex and gender, um, I don't know what happens, they miss their coffee in the morning or what, but the things they're saying, even within, even though they might be an expert in muscle physiology, they just can't seem to put together two like coherent sentences. And, and, and so there's many, many layers. I'm sort of a bit more in favor of just opening the whole thing up somehow where I just take my paper and put it online and it's some sort of like Amazon website and people give me a, a four star out of five star rating and they add their little review. And I don't care who comments on it. It could be a researcher who has their own profile already built up. It could be, you know, some general uh, person in the general population. Maybe just open up the whole thing. Most research uh, is publicly funded anyways. So why are we keeping this information from, from getting out more quickly anyways? Those are just a few thoughts, well, but I'd, I don't have the solution. I, I get the feeling it's a little bit like the problem of politics, where you have the people who are perhaps best placed and, uh, and most qualified to do the reviewing are also the busiest people who take the longest to review and who are least likely to review lots and lots of articles. But those who have a political motivation, who have an intense dogma and are driven by something else like a belief system, they're the ones who are sitting there reviewing paper after paper after paper after paper. So they're probably doing, uh, contributing a bigger portion of that than the people you want to be doing the reviews. Will that also be fair to say that the, it's getting more politically motivated or that you maybe suspect that might be the case? Yeah, look, I, I, think, th I think the politics are definitely in there. Um, it's, yeah, it's really hard to say, like, who's, who's reviewing the papers. Some of the journals do, um, do what I mentioned before, where they do publish the names of... The reviewers, you can get a, a somewhat of a sense um, that way, but um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a tricky one. We just like everywhere in society right now, we have all of the po the politics getting involved in everything, and it's it's impacting. Well peer review for sure. I guess because you're not all in the same room together, because you're not employed, you never actually get to see who your peers are who are doing the peer reviews. It must be a, a total mystery. You're basically a crowd like the Wikipedia editors are. And incidentally, Wikipedia is having the exact same problem that you are, where all the old school editors who are really, really great are now having to fight against this new tide of politically motivated editors and the quality of the content is rapidly declining, which is um, yeah. interesting. It's paralleled everywhere you go.